recording. So welcome everyone to our Chaos App Ecosystem Working Group meeting. Today is March 8. Um, everyone already added themselves to the meeting minutes except myself. You're all much better role models. Excellent. And let's see, action items from last time. I just, while we were talking, I added the link to our blog post on the Chaos Media website. Um, didn't, I, didn't we also want to cross post the blog? Yeah, that's also an action item still to be done. At least we got one done. And then we had one about write an experience report. And Ritzy wanted to take the lead with Shri and Neo as co-authors. Shri, Neo, do you have an update on this? I have. I've talked to Alison. As, uh, as if you see there, it says make sure to involve Alison because she's like uh, an event organizer working for uh, KDE and she's also involved in LAS uh, that we're doing together with Nom. So she has the, let's say, big, big picture on, on these things. So I've talked to her and I asked her actually earlier today and she told me she took a look. It, uh, it will require some time from her side, but she can probably try and like add some bullet points and things like populate the whole document with information so we can start building on that. So, yeah, it's been worked on, I guess, but nothing yet <laughs> on the document. Okay, perfect. It, it would be good to have her insight on this before we shape it up into something that can be <clears throat> shareable. So what's the next step for this one? Wait for In my her mind, or? Yeah, if I can put uh, some initial information there to get it started, we can then go and like, beautify it and make it an action post. Okay. Awesome. Thank you for that update. Um, I think all the other action items we have taken care of. We are on track, we are doing good. Uh, Shri, you and I, we had a conversation on Matrix uh, a month ago almost about what we wanted to do in this work group. Um, With regards to the server that like, Part of that is a server that we were going to build for Gnome, or was that? That was part of that conversation. Yeah, yeah that wasn't. That was a different conversation. Um, we were thinking about metrics that would be useful for the board, oh, yes. and what we had talked about here in this group is that we wanted to do the promotions communications team. But if there is work currently being done for metrics on board for the board members, then the idea was to maybe pivot towards that to get synergies with the work that you're doing for the GNOME board anyway. Right. And so I think uh, if you look on the matrix channel, um, I had posted a couple of links to uh, the um, scalable onboarding, which mm -hmm. had a couple of documents um that i worked worked on so one 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 of, one of them was um when we worked when we looked at the organization right it's sort of like i think there was definitely this idea is nobody really knows what all the roles are or what people are doing i mean there's no label to decide what is the what is the work right and and putting them under certain buckets which we would need for metrics and so um we had gone through and sort of started off with what all the roles and I kind of put them at, with, at certain levels, right? Engineering, uh, outreach, finance, you know, almost like a company, right? Uh, and then under them, we, we put these roles underneath them. And then we did a, a um, 
how did they all interact with each other? So we did an interaction map between them. So that, because one of the things that was interesting was nobody really knew how a release came together. Like who talked to who and things like that. There was nothing really to inform how to do that. And it just sort of naturally happened, I guess. But, um, but so we wanted to figure, so if you're a new, I mean, part of this is if you're somebody who's new to the project, you have no idea how the project works. So the idea is to be able to, to kind of say, okay, this is what happens in a release, or this is what happens, uh, whatever. So that's the first part of it. And, um, and for the board work, there's a finance part, like what, and, and that's something the board has to kind of fill out, like what, what do they, what metrics do they need to drive decisions? You know, what are decisions and so forth. So. So, no, and I feel like that's something we've uh, you you checked before. Uh, I guess my question was, we as the app ecosystem working group, if we can support you in that, right? If it's worthwhile for us to do that, if Neo and Sean also agree, and Ritzy if she was here, then we can leave the promotions communications team metrics for later and focus on. Sure, like a different persona. Right, right. Um, yeah, so I mean, we could look at that and see. I I, um, I did some other work that took that into account. Um, now I, which I can't remember. I'm sorry, but I I'll, I'll dig up the document where yeah. we kind of looked at some measurements there um, that we did early last year. So. So I, I guess Sean and Neo, do you are you invested in the promotions communications team? Do you want to see that done first, or are you open to pivoting? I don't have any strong feelings. Same. I can pivot. Okay. I'm I'm neutral in the whole matter, uh, so I can I can do either. Well, okay. since we haven't started yet, I guess yeah, it's not like yeah, it's a good time now to to do the pivot to something else. Yes. Is there, is there is the promotion thing complete, or are we? I mean, sometimes I, I wonder if we should finish that and and then move on to the next part and leaving it halfway and pivoting. So. Sure, we can we, we can do that. Uh, Good afternoon. No, no, I was just going to say that we haven't started working on it yet. So I don't know what exactly she means with complete, but yeah. Um, I don't think we did anything else other than just say, let's start this in the next call. So. I, I guess um, it, there is some value to completing this because we don't know how hard something is. If you, you know what I'm saying? Like we've got the promotion part, but if it's not in the implementation phase, then we're not, I mean, there, there may be learnings from pursuing it that way that might be the board stuff would be harder and this may be an easier way to finish. And then you get some learnings out of that and then moving, then move to a more harder. Okay. That's. Does that make sense? I know you, you got to look on your face. Tell me, man. <laughs> it makes sense. I just saw the picture that Sean posted in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just. I'm not even on it. Um, okay. Then, then let's stick to it. Uh, I think you have a good point, Sri. Uh, if there's no big need for us to help you right now, then I'm happy to finish the promotions communications team that we started on and then tackle the harder board metrics later. And, and that gives me, but, and also if we learn anything from that, it helps me go back and look at this other stuff and say, oh yeah, okay, maybe there's something something wrong with the way I did it or whatever it is. And so I think, I think, I think it's better this way. Yeah. 
Okay, I need to close this Giphy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Should, <laughs> Should we say which if it is for the people watching that don't have the link? <laughs> well, even though I guess most of them. Okay, I'll share my screen. I'll share my screen so it's on the recording. <laughs> Can you all see it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I like the one that is halfway down where the sofa just falls off the stairs. <laughs> oh. Cool. Let's okay, hope we I'm closing. So we're on. Again. I'm going to add this link into the um, main document under the right. <laughs> To the not not to the pivot thing the um <laughs> for uh the the one you guys just started in the last meeting for that perfect one. yep um so we started with this and as a refresher we went through the structure we wanted to do do, which is goal. I have clearly defined goal of what the promotions communications team wants to accomplish. Um, which now that I read this, want to know the health of the community. Uh, yes, but why? Maybe we should define the goal more, what it is that they actually want to do. Then have a question, how many contributions do we retain or lose as a way to answer or to inform the goal or are we on track and then the metrics on actually collecting the data so that's what we started with did you have that same feeling i had when i read this want to know the health of the community that it's most it feels very broad and like everybody wants to know the health of the community for whatever that means. It's, it's almost like, yeah. you know. Maybe they have more specific goals. Uh, Noritz is here. Yay. <laughs> hello, hello. I have my International Women's Day background. All right, there you go. Happy International Women's Day. <laughs> Thanks for celebrating with us. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Is it cold there where you are? Uh, well, because I'm all bundled up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's actually not that bad. Uh, it has been pretty mild weather. I like to say that I brought my California sunshine with me, so <laughs> not too bad. Yeah, sorry I'm late though. Um, I will try to find, it's actually, do you all have a link to the doc, Andy? Yeah, it's in the okay. chat. If you, if you open up the chat, you should yeah. see. Yeah, since I joined, it didn't preserve the. Oh, no. Zoom chat doesn't. No. Okay, thing. perfect, thank you. No, Zoom chat is always uh, ephemeral, yeah. forgetful, <laughs> or punishing latecomers. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Noritsu, you can see we are all in a very good mood today. Yeah. Oh, wow. I like the person who comes late a lot. Actually, it's an on and off thing. I need to show up or go. <laughs> okay. Um, so we were just about to get started. So we haven't done anything yet today, Noritsu. Um so you joined nice. just in time for the work to start. <laughs> oh my God. Great. <laughs> a bit more social this call. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the question we just started with 
in reviewing what we had already done is this goal. Um, we want to know the health of the community. It sounded, as Sean put it, kind of broad. Like everyone wants to know the health of the community, but it's not a specific goal that the promotions communications team has. Like if we were to build the objective key results, OKR kind of thing, then knowing the health of the community is not really the goal that we have. Makes sense. Now we, we don't have a solution yet. And I, I do think that the uh, promotions and communications are um, uh, maybe more outwards facing than what we're seeing with these goals as in, you know, they want to know uh, something along the lines of the adoption rate or, or how well the, the communications are um, resonating with people and driving particular actions. Um, and some of that might come back to the community. I mean, you grow your user base to grow your contributor base to an extent, right? But um, I feel like people doing promotions are, are maybe more concerned with increasing uh, what you wouldn't consider to be your core community. Yeah, makes sense. Um, and I see at the bottom we have goal X, understand reach of communication, which seems like the thing that we identified. That seems very it's relevant. goal X because it was not part of that original yeah. list. Yeah, I, that gets into I think what I was trying to articulate, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, it seems like um, then we're defining this persona as more of like our typical marketing team um, with goals that they have around maybe even like conversions and things like that of, um, creating pipelines, but the pipeline is like contributions <laughs> instead of like sales. And coincidentally, I'm going to be taking a course on uh, Coursera called Introduction to Marketing. So maybe at, in some weeks, <laughs> I'll be able to <laughs> have <laughs> more information on how to help this persona. <laughs> right now I don't come from a, a background in strong marketing practices it's more like bootstrap your own marketing stuff so it's uh I haven't been I haven't, have been shanghaied into both marketing and sales so yeah <laughs> so when I think of promotions and communications, and I'm thinking about the chaos project, then the things that we have done was to raise awareness of chaos, recruit mm -hmm. new contributors. Mm -hmm. um, we wanted to get engagement with the product services mm -hmm. or software produced by the chaos. We wanted to uh, get speakers for conference. We wanted to get attendees for the conference. We wanted to bring in expertise from outside. So um, we actively reaching out to experts um, for feedback. Let's see, what else did we do? Um, partly the thought leadership component. Or is that yes. This, this feels very familiar, familiar because we did a lot of this when we did the first loss, right? There was a lot of the messaging was around like bringing in expertise. We were the experts, um, things like that, so. Yeah. Um, 
so those were the goals that we had from a commercial communications perspective. I wonder if there's, well, no. Um, I guess around recruit new contributors, what I meant is like be seen as an inclusive community, but that might just be a, I guess it's like crafting your brand or something like, I don't know if that's something that, yeah. Cool. Absolutely. That's a good point. If you want to talk conferences, I guess how that sponsors to the speakers and attendees on the list of people you want to attract. And I'm gonna take this conference thing since we have the event organizer persona. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna just put this in parentheses because that's already done. I just think it's a good idea to list it here to get it out of our system and then move on to the more interesting things that we haven't done yet. So now that we, that we have this, I think this craft a brand for the community is more where goal five comes in. You want to craft the brand of the community. And to do that for raising the awareness and being seen as an inclusive community, we need to know what the community actually looks like so we can communicate those numbers. I was going to say active community as well, but that goes into healthy, I guess, to a large extent. Yes. Let's define healthy. Fun exercise. What does that even mean? <laughs> Any suggestions? Um, you have a good. Sorry. No, I, Sean, go ahead. Yeah, no, I was just going to say, I think there's a lot. There's going to be a lot of variation. I think if you ask a hundred people, you get two hundred answers. So yeah, I guess it, that's what I was thinking. Can you generate a happiness value? I mean, sometimes people think healthy means growth, but I believe that's not true. There's also like the level of communication being at a good. Let's say level. <laughs> I mean, yeah. if I go into a community and see things I don't like, I'll probably not consider it healthy in my mind, at least. But what about how um, I don't want to use the word efficient, but um, like even if you had a small number, but they're active contributors, and that's much more healthy than say. Uh, you know, a huge population, but nobody's doing any work, right? So it's, it's always, you know, like that's 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 a help. Like yes, produ producing is 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 good. Maybe sustainable. Um, yes. In terms of development, I'll, um, yes. I think you got it right. You know. Um, since happiness is a little bit hard to define, I wonder if part of it means more like values driven. Or like, yeah, something like that, where the community has defined some values and then that pulls people together.
I'm going to add a good place people want to be as a healthy community. Or oh, that's more this inclusive part, but I think it's part of a healthy community. OK. I think we are, we, we all agree on healthy being this vague thing that can mean any of these many different things. So I, I'm okay with leaving it at that since we don't have to define, define it like I had to for my PhD. In my PhD, I defined it as the potential for community to continue producing quality software. And yeah. All of we're these not, things I somehow fit underneath that definition. We're not that far away from that yet. <laughs> um, one question that I have. So we have goal build a project brand as an inclusive and healthy community. And I wonder if those are if we need to break it out further, because I think that having a strong brand that people recognize, like that's a goal. And then there's like the inclusive part to it. Um, I don't know. Yeah. And make sure it's an inclusive and healthy community. I don't know. Those almost, I wonder if those are two separate goals. Yeah. I guess part of a healthy community is being inclusive. So. Yeah, I think in inclusiveness, while well, yes, it's part of healthy, it has received a lot of attention in the last five to yeah. 10 years that it's worth listing it separately. Yeah, I agree. It like holds you accountable to that specific part of the healthy community. So building a strong recognizable project brand, a question I have is how do people see the project? Or I don't actually know. I haven't done any research on or any work with brand building. I I, I find it's a, a hard question, right? Let's if we, if we take Phnom, for instance, right? If you if you look at a forum and take a cross section, it looks like we're the hate, most hated person on the internet. <laughs> but in that time frame, when we've asked for help, when it comes to, um, you know, like the Groupon or some of these others, the, there's an overwhelming community response um, in defense, meaning, uh, people are able to differentiate the, the project and you know what it represents to some extent at least from a pure free software so I, I, I find that dichotomy kind of kind of interesting uh, because I don't I'm not sure how people perceive uh, the project right I think that's yeah. it's a really good question actually and I think uh, I think no makes for an interesting case study on that. Um, in that it's one of those projects that's, um, it's so visible that it's that it's very easy to pick on, you know? And uh, it does make opinionated choices in its designs and stuff. And so those things are, are easy to jump in and, and uh, have an internet flame war about. Uh, and yet, as you say, you know, there's, there's, the project continues and, and there's an outpouring of support uh, when it's needed. And so I wonder, like, to what extent, um, to what extent is Reddit amplifying negative voices uh, beyond what actual hard metrics would show? Um, and I think that that's something that that we should be looking at getting to the bottom of. Like, like Reddit is not a representation of the actual. Right. Uh, right. Support for, right. So, and if you just read Reddit, you're going to have a very different picture of like the image of your brand. Right. Um, right. I, and I think that's true <laughs> for a lot of projects. Would, would you say that's true uh, for KDE, Anil? Is, is there, I, 
Yeah, sure. And Reddit on, by itself, it's in many ways its own community, sometimes often outside even from the project, you could say. Like, uh, it's not necessary people contributing to the project or maybe even users of the things that normal KDE produces or every community. So, yeah. I, I think online communities have a, a, a different skew uh, when it comes to uh, brands and products uh, than, you know, in, uh, in th the physical, physical world. Mostly because of how quickly information and misinformation gets propagated within these communities, you know, uh, the, the rates of, those rates are much faster and so people form opinions or, or find a very, very opinionated uh, feelings uh, much quicker. Uh, yeah, I, I love this. And I wonder if this is a question more broadly about which channels amplify or like are most important to us. Um, mm. Because it's like Reddit has, tends to be very heavy on development. So like for our community, that creates a lot of impact. What are other channels? Like, it's not Instagram, most likely, <laughs> you know, uh, how can we amplify our, our effect, our message writing? But uh, I mean, I have seen the same kind of thing in other, uh, other open source communities, right? Like how do other open source communities, it may be a more interesting, um, uh, uh, observations, how the, uh, how the um, other online communities um, um, look at us and judge us or so forth. And, um, and so that's, that's another, uh, I think a more accurate data point, I guess, to some extent. Um, I, I still feel that there's a gen still a general, at least like from a bigger perspective, that there's a there's somewhat negative uh, feelings there. So um, just from, I get along on a, on a lot of online uh, uh, open source groups. So um, I, I generally get a, a sort of a shrug. Or <laughs> so I'm wondering if like the more like high level question behind this is like, how do we measure our sentiment on various channels? Or like, what are the how do we gather data specific to each channel? Um, I'm not quite sure, but I think that's part of what this question is getting at is like, Reddit tends to be negative or whatever, but like, how do we actually measure that and so that we can then combat it? Right. Yeah, yeah. Like, get real. Like, I, I, I have a sense of like, you know, the Reddit perception is skewed uh, one way, uh, but that's a gut feeling and is it skewed? And more importantly, how much is it skewed? Um, and yeah, I don't, I don't have data and I don't even know how to get that data. I guess that's why we're in this I, Zoom meeting. So I, 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 I do find, so um, I've been working with the, um, with the, wow, well, uh, Electron, People, right? Uh, I've been trying to get it on there so that we could get them more involved in in the app ecosystem. And uh, I've noticed that I get I get a lot of negative things on the electron community based on how long sometimes a merge request gets uh, merged, uh, like like the amount of effort it takes for say something that's already agreed upon. That's okay, but then you're still spending six months doing very minor things to get this, and it's still not getting done, right? That that generally creates a negative uh, response uh, from as a data point. Um, so I have one PR that I every two weeks I go out and say, "Can you do something about it?" And there's generally no response, but then somebody goes to the PR and does something. Uh, but it's like a little is, sorry Shri, is this getting at then um like building a brand is inclusive and healthy and you're saying that this is a measure of that like how long mrs are open 
Is that how this relates? Yeah, it's 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 when 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 you're so this is an uh, this is a, a an example of somebody from outside the community going in and, and and taking the time and doing something and then not not following through to, even though there's been no objections right so if, if it's a moment of you know hey this but it's like we in the merge request they, they say oh we like this thing we want to we want to and then oh can you do this little thing can you do <laughs> and then that, and get, no, that gets yeah, and also is like you're giving this example it's very specific and i'm wondering how it relates back to this conversation. oh right yes uh i guess i'm, I'm just saying uh okay so if we were to take the higher level it's um people's awareness of, of, a, of a brand or a thing comes from their first initial uh um uh like impression. experience sort of? through, yeah through yeah. through these kinds of things through your first contribution or whatever. And so I guess if, if you were to take a data point is mm. what is, how are contributions in general? Yeah, I mean, of course not every contribution is gonna be, you know, there's there's plenty of us that we have in Gnome or in KDE where you know, our contribution is rejected and people are mad, but, but that initial how it gets done, uh, it matters in terms of brand. Yeah, so to me, this kind of bubbles up in terms of like testimonies or like people's ratings of your community. Yeah. Um, and how that factors into brand. I think that's part of it. So and yeah, then you can get more specific could... around like NPS or other things like that. Sorry, Nia, what were you saying? No, I was just thinking like, Turn this into some sort of measurable thing. It's how you, how you let's say, track uh, first impressions of your interaction with a project or a community in general. So, leaning a bit. And I'm wondering if you can detect a first contribution, could you relate? For example, in my mind, it's like go find the people that joined or made the contribution. Or a PR. Uh, what I had mentioned before, I'll add a link to it also, but I don't know if you've heard of the net promoter score, where it kind of gets at um, customer satisfaction. It's used in a lot of like customer satisfaction surveys, but it's what I think you're getting at, Sri, which is like the experience that you have with this product or community or whatever it is affects your perception of it. And so this net promoter, promoter score metric is a way to measure hmm. sentiment. Yeah. Right, so if you're able to create uh, an approximation or even use the net promoter, that would, that would be a great way to, to determine uh, brand at a more uh, visceral level, yeah. And then I, I heard you, you know, really say that Reddit, for example, happens to be a big social channel for us in the Linux desktop space. Um, so it might be worth using that specifically um, and trying to figure out how we figure out like what Sean was saying, like we have a gut feeling that it's negative, but you know, how do we actually measure that? I'm sure there are some ways like one, how many times we end up on like the front page of some, I, I, I'm not super familiar with Reddit, but you know, like we end up being like a major, like having a certain amount of upvotes or downvotes or things like that. Like that, those can be our, our metrics. I think it's more that uh, you almost need a, uh, like a machine learning sentiment analysis on, on like what people are saying, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know how to quantify that. Yeah, I wonder, do we flag things for like violations also? Like when people get really nasty? Yeah, we do, uh, as moderators. <laughs> that could also be a metric is like how many times do we have to interfere? So our latest metric 
like at least in engagement, uh, at least Arcanome is it's the highest it's been for a long, for quite a bit. And so there, there is a, a general increase in participation, or at least on the forum, uh, in, in terms of who's joined and whatnot. And uh, I, I think I talked to um, Alicia, and he, I think, or, or Paul, and I, I think he, he sees the same uptick in, in the KDE forum. So uh, I, I think we're seeing a trajectory of much more engagement and I don't I don't know if that's because of loss or whatever. I don't I don't know any of that stuff but uh, that's that's a it's a, an interesting data point I also notice less engagement in our Linux meaning it's more subject matter driven and and even like the amount of posts that gnome usually in the old days like two three years ago there would be a gnome post every other day and then there would be a 400 comment Flame war. Now, hardly, <laughs> hardly anything. Now, in the past, I've noticed it's been very, very quiet. Even though we're having, if you notice, even though we're putting on a release that has very, very, you know, like large, large changes, right? And I, I believe that's because. Uh, sorry if I'm going a little offside. Is that our communication in for this release is has been way higher than it has been in any release in the past in terms of, uh, and that has changed the amount of dynamic uh, in there because people are seeing changes up way up ahead than before. And I think everything else in these other forums is a, is a, is a, is a, a react, emotional reaction to, to things, so. Yeah, I think there's a lot to unpack there, but I don't know exactly how to list it, but it's something about how your communications are affecting even the processes right. of so, the community. So yeah. I'm, I, I, I love the okay. conversation. I love the direction <laughs> this is going. As a facilitator, I want to remind so, ourselves so. that we wanted to stop eight minutes ago, but I, I let this go because I had the feeling we all enjoyed this and was going well, <laughs> but I want to be mindful of everyone's time. Okay, okay. no worries. Um, um, it's a good point to stop, uh, but uh, and we can always chit chat on the, the chaos thing if you want to continue. What I what I took away from from this conversation is that before we dive into the metrics, maybe I need to get on the same page more. What does it actually mean to be a promotions communications team for our open source projects, and to share some experiences we've had before we then go into how do we actually measure these things that we care about. So if we can continue that conversation in two weeks, that would be amazing. Could we could we invite like Paul Brown and um, some uh, uh, from KDE to, because he's been doing a lot of the promotions and I, I feel like we should get some of the experts here who, who has been doing the, you know. Yeah. All the, um, right? Paul and Caroline. Oh, yeah, would be great. I think I think those are good people, and, and Christy, uh, to to really do that um, uh, because I think their input would be very valuable, and they should really know what we're up to here <laughs> because we're we're essentially you know trying to measure the output of their work, right? So uh, I think it's important to be inclusive. And, my, my spidey senses say there's an interesting conversation ahead oh, yeah. of us. So I'm very looking forward to seeing that. Yeah, so. if, if we can invite them, what would you think about recording that for a podcast episode? I would love that. I think that would be amazing. I think, I think, I think that would be fantastic. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Paul and also Nika from a marketing team would be very interested to... Yeah. So cool. Do you, do you, would you be inter Would you also be interested by reach out to the Electron Outreach Work Group and see if they may want to just to throw in uh, a chaos? Uh, no pun intended. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 thing in there, just as an offside. Uh, there's a reason behind that, but. Uh, 
I can stop the recording and then we can talk about the actual. <laughs> Let me stop the recording and then we can finish this up. So thanks everyone for joining. Stop the recording now.